In this video, I'm going to share with you some of my personal favorite air-gapped hardware wallets, but first I want to take a look at what an air-gapped hardware wallet actually is and determine if it's actually more secure than a non-air-gapped hardware wallet. So what is an air-gapped hardware wallet? Well, really it's just a wallet that's disconnected from most external forms of communication, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, and USB connections. So instead of having a direct connection to your phone or computer to transfer data or do firmware updates, it uses methods like QR codes and micro SD cards. But are air-gapped hardware wallets actually more secure than non air gap wallets. A lot of people believe so, mainly because that's what certain wallet manufacturers will tell us. They'll have a list of things on their website stating why an air gap wallet is more secure. But I actually did a, a ton of research. I read several articles online, watched a few YouTube videos about air gap technology, and this is what I found out. Even without a direct connection to external devices like your phone or computer, your hardware wallet still has to communicate with that internet connected device. The main difference between a direct connection, such as a USB connection, and an air gap connection is bandwidth, which is the amount of data that can be transferred. QR codes carry less data than a USB connection, for example, but when it comes to potentially malicious data being transferred to your air gap hardware wallet, it can still be transferred through QR codes or micro SD cards. That said, it's always your wallet's responsibility to inspect and sanitize the data that it receives. So if it receives malicious data and it doesn't recognize it as malicious, then an air gap wallet is not going to help you. According to Bitbox's research on this matter, not a single vulnerability relied on the transformation layer, which is where the hardware wallet communicates with an online device such as your phone or computer, which means even with an air gap hardware wallet, it's still possible that you could receive malicious data that could potentially compromise your wallet and all of your crypto. So does that mean that air gap hardware wallets are just a marketing scam and that they don't actually have any benefits over a non air gap hardware wallet? Well, not exactly. Air gap communication can still limit certain types of attack that would continuously need access to your wallet, such as when it's probing your wallet to view your seed phrase when you're entering it or when you are generating a receiving address or entering your passphrase, for example. So at least now we know there is a benefit to using an air gap hardware wallet versus a non air gap hardware wallet in terms of security. However, it does come at a slight cost, which is user friendliness. If you've ever used a air gap hardware wallet before, you know that it takes a few extra steps to initiate and confirm transactions and update your firmware. It's not as easy as just plugging in a USB into your computer and clicking a button. For example, to update firmware, you'll have to insert the micro SD card into your computer, download the firmware onto the micro SD card, insert that back into your hardware wallet, and then upload the firmware that way. So if you can get over the slight learning curve that comes with using an air gap hardware wallet, I think it's definitely worth it versus using a non air gap hardware wallet, especially considering the price is usually in the same range and if you want these wallets that I'm going to mention for an even more affordable price, make sure to take advantage of the discount codes in the description of this video. Now, the Keystone 3 Pro is my favorite air gap hardware wallet, mainly because it comes with an optional air gap mode, which I'll explain in just a second, but it also comes with a ton of security features that not a lot of hardware wallets on the market offer. So what do I mean by optional air gap mode? Well, if you wanna use it in the air gap mode, you would just not use the USB cable with it, so you would use the rear facing camera to scan QR codes codes and then you would use a micro SD card to update your firmware. Just a heads up, the micro SD card is not included with the Keystone 3 Pro, so you will have to buy that separately. You can buy one, you just need like a 8 or 16 gig, which you can buy at the store or on Amazon for just about $10. But if you aren't keen on the whole area thing, then you don't have to use the camera or the micro SD card for updating your firmware. You can just plug it into your computer using the included USB-C cable and confirm transactions and update the firmware that way. But if you wanna use your Keystone 3 Pro as a completely air gap wallet, you can go to the settings, disable the USB functionalities. This way the cable can only be used to charge the device and no data will be able to be transmitted from your online connected device to your hardware wallet. So when the 3 Pro originally came out, it was advertised as having an optional Bluetooth connection as well. But after a bunch of pushback from the community, they decided to completely eliminate the Bluetooth connectivity option on the wallet. So you don't have to worry about any Bluetooth connections. Keystone also moved away from using a native app to manage your crypto like you'll find on most other cold wallets. So instead you use third party hot wallets such as MetaMask to manage your crypto. This does not compromise security because remember cold wallets are secure because they store your private key and other sensitive data on the physical device which keeps 
keeps it offline, which is still the case with the Keystone 3 Pro. So all you're doing is connecting your 3 Pro to a hot wallet to initiate transactions, but everything still needs to be confirmed on the physical device. And that's something I wanna point out about the Keystone 3 Pro and Keystone as a company in general. When they designed the 3 Pro, their main focus, their main priority was making a secure device. So as a result, it is super secure. It's just not as user-friendly as other hardware wallets. So if you are brand new to cold wallets, then the Keystone 3 Pro might not be the best wallet for you, but it's not that difficult to learn to use. Now, in terms of security, the Keystone 3 Pro actually comes with a ton of security features that you won't find in a lot of other hardware wallets on the market, including 100% open source code that is also audited by a blockchain security company, Slowmist. It uses three secure element chips to store sensitive information like your private key. It also has a device verification feature that double checks your Keystone device or downloaded firmware isn't corrupted. It also supports three seed phrases using one device, so you can basically have three wallets in one. Its anti-blind signing feature allows you to easily read transaction details. That way you know you're not signing any malicious transactions. It also has a self-destruct feature that erases your wallet from the device if too many failed attempts to access are made. And it also supports creating and importing a hidden wallet, also known as a passphrase. It also comes with a large four inch touchscreen, which is really nice for navigating the device. There is a slight lag when using it, but not a huge deal. Just make sure you slow down and actually look at what you're tapping on. And for $130, I think the Keystone 3 Pro is pretty hard to beat. You're getting an air-gapped hardware wallet with a ton of security features and a proven track record. Keystone has been known as a really solid hardware wallet company for a few years. And to my knowledge, they have never been hacked. And next on my list is the EliPal Titan 2.0. This is EliPal's latest air-gapped cold wallet, and it comes with one major upgrade that the previous models didn't have, which I'll touch on in just a minute. Now, unlike the Keystone 3 Pro, the Titan 2.0 is 100% air-gapped. There is no optional air-gap mode, so you do have to use QR codes to transact using this wallet, and you do have to use the included microSD card to update your firmware. There's no way around that. Everything about the Titan 2.0 is very air gap focus in my opinion. It's a one solid piece of metal and there are no ports on the actual device. So when you charge the device, you set it on the included charging dock. The cable plugs into the dock. That way you're not plugging anything into the actual wallet. And same with updating the firmware. It has a slot on the dock to insert a micro SD card, which is included with the wallet and you can update your firmware that way. However, there is one issue that myself and some others have discovered when using the Titan 2.0, more specifically when trying to update the firmware. Now to update the firmware, you set the wallet on the charging dock, you insert the micro SD card, and the light on the dock is supposed to turn blue, which means you are good to update the firmware. If it remains green, that means you cannot update the firmware. The problem is, sometimes that light stays green. Now to fix this, you keep the micro SD card inserted into the dock with your wallet on the dock and you unplug the cord from the wall for just a few seconds, then plug it back in and the light should turn blue, allowing you to update the firmware. Now, when I originally received the Titan 2.0, I received it before it was even released to the public. So it is a very early model. So maybe they have fixed this issue since then. I'll definitely try to find out. I'll send them an email and see if they have fixed the issue. Um, but if not, I just wanna let you know that that problem does exist and give you a little workaround to update your firmware if you decide to get the Titan 2.0. Also, unlike Keystone, Elipal has their own native app for managing crypto on your hardware wallet device. That means you don't have to go and download a bunch of third-party wallets and use those to manage all your crypto. You can manage all of your funds using one native app. It is a mobile-only app, so if you do prefer to manage your crypto on a desktop device, then Elipal is probably not for you. You might wanna go with Keystone because a lot of third-party wallets that Keystone is compatible with are also desktop compatible. But as far as the actual mobile app, it is really easy to use, so it is a great option if you don't mind using your mobile device to manage your crypto. One other thing worth noting is that Elipal devices are not fully open source, they're only partially open source. So their QR code generation and their update mechanism are both open source and available to the public. However, the private key generation code is closed source. Now, although the Titan 2.0 doesn't have as many security features as the Keystone 3 Pro, it does have all the security features that you would still want from a cold wallet, or at least all the features that I believe a cold wallet should have, including a secure element chip, a device-specific pin and passphrase, 
an anti-tamper self-destruct mechanism, and the ability to create and import passphrases, aka hidden wallets. All that said, if you want a completely air-gapped hardware wallet with no external forms of communication, no optional forms of communication, the Elipal Titan 2.0 is definitely a solid option, especially for only $169. It is a little more expensive than the Keystone 3 Pro, but again, you are getting a completely 100% air gap device. Actually, if you're looking for a more affordable option than the Titan 2.0, there is the Titan Mini. It's coming in about $70 less, it's only $99. And it's basically the same as the Titan 2.0 besides the obvious size difference. And the only other difference is that it does not come with a secure element chip built into it. And that chip is used in most cold wallets to prevent someone from gaining physical access to your wallet and taking your private key. However, it still comes with a device specific pin and passphrase, which prevents anyone from gaining access to your wallet. So it's definitely not a huge deal. Um, if you're looking for a more affordable 100% air gap cold wallet. Now this next wallet is for Bitcoin maxis only and that's because it's an air gapped Bitcoin only wallet called Blockstream Jade. Jade is another optional air gap hardware wallet so you can use the camera on the back. Yes, this thing actually does have a little camera on the back. So you can use that to transact. However, it also has Bluetooth and a USB connection if you want to use those methods to transact. Uh, one thing to note is that you can only update the firmware using a USB connection, so that's why it's only partially air-gapped. This is what I like to call a bare-bones wallet. I mean, as you can see, it's really small. It has this uh, pretty small screen. It only has one button on the front used to approve anything that you do on the wallet, but it does have a jog wheel on the top, which will help you navigate the device easily. And then it also has a power button on the side. Jade does come with its own app for managing your crypto. It's available on both desktop and mobile called Blockstream Green. You can also use third-party wallets such as Sparrow, Electrum, and Blue Wallet to manage your Bitcoin along with a few other wallets if you prefer to use those wallets. As simple as this wallet is, it actually does come with quite a few security options, including a device specific pin, a hidden wallet option, and optional 2FA to authorize transactions if using it with Blockstream Green Multi-Sig Shield, and what they call a virtual secure element, which allows a wallet to remain completely open source while still protecting your private key. Of course, I would only recommend this wallet if you are looking for a Bitcoin only air gapped wallet. It is the most affordable wallet on the list coming in at only $64. But regardless, whether or not you use an air gap hardware wallet, all cold wallets are still susceptible to phishing scams, which is the most popular scam in crypto right now. So you have to learn how to use your cold wallet correctly to prevent these scams, which I show you in this next video right here. As always, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one.